What's up, guys? This is Derek Kirby, a.k.a. DDP. No, if you're asking, the Mavericks have not yet signed Goran Dragic. And no, the Toronto Raptors have not yet bought out Goran Dragic for the Mavericks to then sign Goran Dragic. Good? Yeah? All right, let's go. In the meantime, the Mavericks are going to have to do something practical. They're going to have to build their team as best they can. And I think they're taking out a flyer on a very low-risk, potentially high-reward acquisition here, as it is believed, according to Mark Stein of the New York Times, that the Dallas Mavericks are going to acquire on a guaranteed minimum contract Frank Natilikina. Now, this is a guy, if you remember, he's been with New York. New York was famously panned for drafting him over Dennis Smith Jr. It kind of tied him and Dennis Smith together for a while, although that sort of fell away when then Dallas turned around and traded Dennis Smith Jr. to New York for Kristaps Porzingis. Dennis Smith flamed out there and then flamed out in Detroit. He's still out there. I had kind of hoped they would kick the can a little bit. Kick the can? Kick the tires a little bit to see what he had because I think that would be interesting. But uh, in this route, they're going with a guy who also never was able to reach his upside. It's a very different kind of player than Dennis Smith. It's not like they're the same archetype of player. But you get a guy in Frank Natilikina who can really stat stuff a stat sheet. Now, this comes from all things Mavs on Twitter. In games last year where Frank got at least 18 minutes of playing time, here are his stat lines. And yes, the fact that I can rattle them off in quick succession tells you weren't there weren't a lot of opportunities for him to do that. But let's get going. 13 points, two boards, one assist, one steal, one block, three of seven from three, four of nine from the field. That's one game. 13 points, two rebounds, three of three from three, five of seven from the field. Seven points, three steals, two assists, one of three from three, three of six from the field. Nine points, two rebounds, two assists, two steals, one block, three of four from three, three of five from the field. Finally, 12 points, one board, four of four from three, and four of six from the field. He's a guy who in small doses, in small windows of opportunity, has been able to be very productive. On catch and shoot threes, he's well over 40%. I think catch and shoot wide open threes, you're talking close to 46%. From the corners, he's even better. This is why I think Dallas is really looking at him. He's a guy who, as you see in the thumbnail here, I guess it's not the thumbnail, as you see on the screen next to me here, he's a very good perimeter defender, long, lengthy, athletic, really helped bother Luka at times in their matchups. Yes, I know Reggie Bullock the new Maverick as well. Hey, look, another former Nick. We're slowly becoming the former New York Knicks, and I don't feel too comfortable about that because it's the Knicks before they turned things around last year. But I digress. I think it's a, I think it's a good addition for a guy who, if, if, if nothing else, if he can just give you that catch-and-shoot open-look three percentage and the corner threes, and then he can be a long, athletic guy on the perimeter to be a capable defender, then you can find a role for him. Here's something worth noting. The fact that the Mavericks are bringing him in and it is a guaranteed deal means that they are more than likely. It's not just a training camp invite. If they're guaranteeing money, I don't see that as just a training camp invite. I think this is an indication that they are going to waive Trey Burke. Trey Burke wiped his Instagram account a few days ago. Nothing Mavericks on there, nothing anything. It's basically wiped clean. He's radio silent. And now news of this comes out. I think this is that move. So that's the move to facilitate his joining the Mavericks. Uh, Frank Natilikina is joining the Mavericks. I think it's a good addition. Again, low risk, potentially high reward. No disrespect to Trey, but we've seen the highs of what he can do. And realistically, it's not going to do enough of that. It's not. We're not going to get those brilliant flashes that we did get, admittedly, at times from Trey. So I'm okay with this move. If Goran Dragic comes available, Dallas will have to do something else to open up some room. The thing is, they already project to be way over the cap next year anyway, and I have no problem with them play, uh, paying over the cap. Mark Cuban hasn't paid over the cap in a decade. That's for, for someone who insists that they're trying to build a championship team in the last three years, they've been kind of saying that, basically the Luka window as it opened, it's really glaring that they haven't been willing to pay the tax. And I understand that that limits you in some capacity, but the fact that you're not going into that range 
is a little concerning. Into the luxury tax is a little concerning. So I'm not panicked by the fact that they're projected to be comfortably into the tax finally next year. But this move now, if it's a guaranteed deal, does push you a little further yet into that territory, which is, again, why I don't see Dallas backing away here. They're not going to bring him in for training camp and be like, well, that's cool. Thanks for coming. Here's your guaranteed money. That's now dead money for next year. They wouldn't pay him guaranteed money for a season he's not going to play for them. Not when they're already in a, a little bit of a tough cap situation. They're going to keep him. And I, I just think that's more than likely what you're looking at. And they'll make some other moves to open up some cap space. But this is a, a pretty a pretty unique move here because of his three-point shooting alone and his ability to be an active defender, his length and athleticism and ability to kind of stuff a, a stat sheet, I think really could get him a nice rotation role on this team. Again, weird how him and Dennis within a four-year window traded teams and even were teammates at one point. It's almost like every combination that could have been tried happened. The only thing else would be if Dennis came here, back to here, and Frank was still here as well. That would be the only other scenario I can really think of. But even still, in other news real quick, don't forget to check out Mavs Moneyball. My debut piece for them is dropping tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. It is a piece on Reggie Bullock, why he is no Josh Richardson, and why that's a good thing. Be on the lookout for that. Once that video drops, I will do an adaptation here. That is my plan. I am still writing for The Smoking Cuban as well. I'm also writing for Blogging the Boys. I'm also writing for The Dallas Prospect. I am a man of many talents and obligations. So, all things to keep in mind, but that's all my time for this. This is just a quick little video. I, I felt like enough time had kind of passed. I needed just to drop in for a quick update. So if you haven't already liked the video, leave a comment, subscribe to The Dallas Prospect. Let me know. Are you excited about this acquisition? Are you at least intrigued by this acquisition? And is it right if Trey Burke is the man out in Dallas? Is that the right choice? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to get your thoughts. Till next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!